So now let's take a look at the list that's in front of you. There's something called the pentality of forecasting, and I'm going to tie that together with the forecasting triggers, and you'll see how they uh, coincide with one another. Because at the top of the form or the top of the page that you're looking at, there are five different categories of the way I'd like you to look and use this list. And it's going to sound like seven, but there's actually five, because the category of you includes your group, you personally, and your organization, the three of them. Then what I'd like you to do is look at it from your customer perspective or client, however your terminology, the terminology you use, your supplier, your vendor, either your competition, and the world and the universe together. So there are many different ways that you could be using this list. Now below those, that listing that's there, there is a series of words, I'm gonna read some to you just in case you don't have them in front of you at this moment, that you are going to be extrapolating from. And they're from all over, for example, Ge globalism, geopolitics, climate, robotics, gaming, automation, talent, nanotechnology, food, real estate, agriculture, arts, employment, economics, uh, customization, social networks. What you're going to be doing is utilizing these as a base foundation to, to like as I said, wake up your mind and say to yourself, what's the future of this? So if I was to say to you, what's the future of social networks? Could you describe it to me today? Do you have any inclination what that, what that might look like? If I was to say to you, what is the future of gaming? What is the future? Do you know? Do you even know anything about the gaming industry, not just games? I was just in St. Petersburg last week or week and a half ago working with a gaming company who's an offshore, um, nearshore producer of the gaming programming. So if you're a major gamer, what you'd be doing is you'd be writing, they'd be doing the code for some of the pieces that you might not have the skill set to, the time to produce. And so I've learned about where the future of gaming is going. So let me explain how to use this tool. Two different ways. Let's look at the individual. And I'm going to use them right off the list so that the way it's structured here so that you can get a sense of uh, exactly the tool methodology. The first one is to select a trigger off the list. And I use the word forecasting triggers because triggers are things that initiate, they, they start something to happen. So if you picked, for example, uh, let's grab one very quickly, nature. And you said, I'm going to pick this one, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna forecast the future. I'll make a suggestion though here. Instead of picking the categories that you like or you're familiar with, Use it kind of like a dartboard. Throw a piece out and say, which one comes out? Or pay, put them all in a hat and pick one out. Because what it's supposed to do is to get you to be thinking differently, to look at the world in a way you hadn't seen before. So you first pick the same, the, the, the trigger that you'd like. The second one is you start to make some projections about it. Now you can make these projections without doing any research, but I would suggest do a little homework. What is happening in that space, you probably don't know. Read a few articles, get a feel for what's going on. You might be knowledgeable in one area about that industry, but not the entire industry. The, second th the third thing you're gonna do is connect the dots. Pick an, uh, another trigger or pick your industry and say, how do you relate to nature? How does what you re do relate to nature? In the book, Paid to Think, you'll notice that some of the things we talked about in the innovation sector came from nature. For example, we have the mimic um, biomimicry. I learned about biomimicry, which is the act of engaging or acting like the biology works. For example, water flows down a leaf, or a woodpecker pecking into a tree are all types of technologies that we could use to, for the movement of water or for the motion of an ax that can be used for climbing mountains. Once you've done this, you identify potential opportunities. What types of things can you do with this new information you have? And don't try to do it immediately. This doesn't happen to have to happen that minute. Let it sit, let it gel. Maybe the next day or the next day you say to yourself, I never thought about working on it that way. Or delve in a little further to find out if there are opportunities you've missed. I'd even suggest then take this information and rec record your insights for future use. Maybe on video, maybe share it with your team, maybe the next meeting you have, throw it out to the group. 
So that's number one, using it by yourself individually, trying to use the tool of forecasting triggers. There's another way to use this, which is much more dynamic, much more challenging, but could be a lot of fun. What you do is you bring together a group of people, and if you have enough, you can separate in two or three or four groups. If you have a small group of people, you might have one group. Pick one, two, or three different categories on the list of forecasting triggers and say to yourself, okay, let's do some projections here. And you'd be surprised the knowledge that the people at the table have about things you never thought about. They've read an article in, um, in Scientific American. They have a background in biology. Yesterday or two days ago, I was uh, for Halloween. Just before Halloween, I was in a bar and this lady's a science person and she teaches science and my background is organic chemistry, physics, calculus. So I was able to have this conversation. Never, we talked about things that were completely unrelated to everybody around us, but it was exciting and new when we were connecting dots. Then what you do, once you've come up with the, uh, the forecast for the particular industries, now connect them. What do those triggers initiate together and then connect to you? And you'll find that if you're taking biopharmacology or nanotechnology, you might be able to impact that to uh, clothing. You might be able to impact it to tree design or, or architecture that'll be used in certain environments. You've got all sorts of ways in which you can start connecting them and, and really push it. Give people time to explore and to find. Record your notes, record what you're thinking about. Bring it back to your organization. Then when you're done, take the group and start to share with all the other groups, what you've learned and experienced. And here it becomes, a, you can then say, how do those forecasts all connect? So now you've got this multiple, multiplicative version of forecasting happening, learning from everybody. Take those notes, take that information, bring it back to your organization, bring it back to your lives, and make some changes. In the next video, I'm going to share with you an example of this, but I'd like to give you some type of thinking that I've done when I'm doing some this type of trigger forecasting. I was working for the Radio Association, a, uh, a National Association of Radio Broadcasting, uh, NAB, I think it is, National Association of Broadcasters, and I was talking for the radio industry in particular. And what I, one of the questions that I brought up or started to connect when I did my interviews and did my research about the industry was that the people in the audience saw a challenge that they were addressing, which was they weren't tending to get the young kids engaged in their radio stations on a local level. Now here's a little history. The radio industry believes that their future is local because Spotify and all the other organizations, uh, the other media, uh, radio organizations online have taken up that other space. They said we're gonna be local, local news, local sports, local information. Here's the challenge. Here's where it kinda goes freaky. They were trying to get young kids to engage in local media. When you were growing up, what was local? When I was growing up, what was local? But today, local is different. Local to a teenager is a young kid. They see Facebook and they can have friends in Spain and in, in, in Serbia or in Russia. Their local is global. So you have to be looking at the world differently. So what I did is I gave them new insight. I gave them a new way of looking at the world. So this is a win by a nose, lose by a nose scenario. You could win just by having that little bit of information, by thinking differently. I was connecting triggers of information, found a new paradigm shift, shared it with the group, opened their eyes to new exploratory, made the invisible visible. Forecasting triggers, cool material to work with. And you can have a lot of fun with it. So let me go on to an example in the next section of how this has been used.